We in the United States need to be very clear. We are entitled and we are right to reject Chinese cheating, Chinese violation of the rules, rules that don't cover unfair practices. We're right when we're against that. But when our position is that China can't succeed and that China is not allowed to succeed or it's somehow wrong for China to succeed, that's an untenable position for us politically and an untenable position for us economically. All right, so talk tough, but don't get too, too tough. The read from the former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers on uh, Wall Street Journal at large with my buddy Gerard Baker. Uh, that premieres tonight, by the way, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So does the president then risk going too far in this approach on China? Former U.S. Trade Rep under Barack Obama, Michael Froman, on what happens if things get really bad here. Good to have you, Ambassador. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So what, that's a delicate walk, isn't it? And how does the president move forward this weekend? There's a lot of pressure on him, especially presumably after the Federal Reserve and that surprise announcement that maybe the rate fears are going to ease a little bit, that to complete the picture here, he's got to score a deal uh, with the Chinese. What do you think? Well, look, I think he certainly has gotten the attention of the Chinese leadership uh, with his tariff moves. And the question now is, uh, is there no agreement, in which case there'll be increasing tariffs over time? Do they reach a substantive agreement on the key issues around Chinese industrial policy? Or is there some sort of process agreement, which seems the most likely outcome, where they just agree that they're going to talk, and as provided they're talking, there won't be an increase in tariffs? Uh, that's better than an, an escalating trade war, certainly, uh, but it doesn't yet resolve the fundamental underlying issues. You know, I know you dealt with this and prior administrations dealt with this, but no matter what the Chinese say, they, they don't stick to. You can't trust them. So how do you get them to stick to whatever they say they're going to do? Well, look, I think you need to have very clear rules. You need to organize internationally so that the rest of the world is very focused on holding their feet to the fire on things like excess capacity, which we did on, in the areas of, of steel and aluminum. Um, and you need to use all the tools you have available, including taking them to the WTO, where we brought lots of cases against them, won every case that went to conclusion. Ultimately, they do respond when they lose cases at the uh, at the World Trade Organization. You know, the, the president has been talking and his people have been talking that you got to be really tough and have a take no prisoners attitude. Maybe that explains why Peter Navarro is there, a very tough trade advisor who, you know, is, is, wants to you know push him right against the wall. Is, is there a danger in that in your eyes or, or their view seems to be all else has failed in the past. This is the way we have to move forward. Well, as, as Larry Summers said on your clip, I think the, the president, the administration is right to focus on issues where China is cheating. The question is, they have their own interests and their own politics, and we have to find a way forward where they can address these issues in a way that's consistent with, uh, with, their, with their interests. Uh, the problem about painting them into a corner is that uh, they have lots of ways of, of reducing our exports to their market, uh, closing their market to our businesses, and that's not in our interest either. And so hopefully there's a pathway forward here uh, where, uh, where they can find uh, ways to accommodate the interests not only of the United States, but of the rest of the global economy. As well, I would say in you know in the last couple of years of the Obama administration, we were negotiating a bilateral agreement with them, which addressed many of these issues: forced technology transfer, uh, enforcement of intellectual property rights, disciplines on state-owned enterprises. But it would have required a bilateral agreement where the U.S. was willing to make some assurances as well. And hopefully, the Trump administration can pick up on that and continue that work. Well, a number of representatives of the Trump administration have responded to that and and, and said that you know why should we make uh, any kind of concessions when, in fact, they, they've been playing this game and have all the advantages and all the off-the-chart tariffs um, that are not fair, and, and it's there. The obligation is on them to do something, you say? Well, I think there are certainly a lot of Chinese policies that we need to, to get at. I don't think there's any equivalence in what we have versus what what, what they have, but getting them to move away from their uh, the, the stated path that they're on, I think is going to be quite difficult, and it means uh, making sure that we're finding ways to accommodate them into the international community. Look, the alternative is that we're basically pursuing parallel paths in the global economy. We're pursuing our path with our technology. They're pursuing their path with their technology, and that's a very difficult competition because they'll seek to set the international standards, and given the size of their economy uh, and the emphasis that they can put on it, the resources they can put on it, uh, that can be very challenging for us.
All right. Ambassador, very nice having you. Thank you very much for taking the Thanks time. Thanks for having me.